What a weekend. What a weekend in Nashville, Tennessee. Connor Daly, Joey Molinaro. How you doing, man? I'm great. Yeah. I, I lost my voice, though. I lost my voice after Sunday night and really after every day because a lot of loud noises in Nashville. Yes. And uh, the live bands, uh, whew, very loud, especially. <laughs> and they are there and they're right in your face. They're, and I they're, enjoyed it. They're in your face and they are plentiful. I mean, Sunday it, night, we had quite a night. Not, not lacking for live music in Nashville. Going to get Connor's thoughts on Nashville. Not only, of course, the track and the race itself, but it was one of your first time. What first time really going down there? Yeah, it was. So we'll get the thoughts on the city itself, Broadway, all that good stuff. Uh, and then really, this episode—I mean, it was such a huge weekend in Nashville, huge so, week almost. Like, I was down there for four days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was Thursday through Monday. Yeah. So it was we were living down there for for a little bit. Uh, you know, big weekend off the track, on the track, Indy car, out the car. Um, so we're just gonna recap all of that and get to some listener questions at the end. Got six or seven really good ones that I thought uh, you could weigh in on. And then as well as uh, myself talking about uh, the streets of Nashville. So let's just hop into it, man. Nashville, you got there Wednesday? Tuesday. Tuesday. A little Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. Um, and really got right out on the streets. Uh, we're staying at the Grand Hyatt, kind of right there on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Uh, incredible environment. Uh, linked up with some human beings um, that uh, were from there. And proceeded to get a little tour around, and uh, sure enough, I had I, I, I met some other folks, a uh, a country music fellow who had who we'd I'd, we'd only really communicated on Instagram, um, because he wanted to buy one of my mullet shirts, which was great. So nice. <laughs> respect that. Hell yeah. A uh, couple couple ladies down there decided to show us the you know the streets a little bit, and uh, proceeded to enjoy some. You know it's Tuesday, so we we I you know we had a couple cold beverages that night. You know maybe a couple skinny margaritas. I don't know some other things like that, uh, and really enjoyed it. And on a Tuesday night, I thought it was like a Saturday. Yeah, like it was unbelievable. But I mean, the streets were alive. There were buses with human beings uh, drinking on them all day, like from <laughs> at nine a.m. Like we're like I'm walking out of the hotel, going to the track, nine a.m. Boom, there's a group of like. 12 people having a bachelorette party drinking at 9 30 in the morning on a on a on an old school bus yeah which no. is wild it's um you know people they call it the music city they say it's the country music capital of the world but it is also the the bus drinking capital of the world yeah i mean you're the the over my buddy set on saturday morning before we went to broadway and my buddy was like okay uh six and a half bachelorette parties on top of a bus you see uh <laughs> you think we see in, in broadway today and i kid you not from the uber ride there to where we were going, we saw probably ten. <laughs> so they hit that very quickly, and and not just buses. Like some of the like, well, there was one that was a fire truck that had been converted into a party arena, and I was like, I respect the nature of that town. And I mean, it was it was twelve o'clock on a win- on a Thursday. I was just going to the track, just stopped in to have some lunch at the the twelve thirty club. Uh, Justin Timberlake, I believe, is somehow affiliated with that. I learned. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and this guy, just single, just single man performing on stage, was one of the most talented musicians I've ever witnessed. I think like he was, he was playing Thunderstruck by ACDC by himself, and I was like, this is this is an incredible. And walking around doing guitar solos while I'm just having, you know, a breakfast sandwich. It was it was it was an incredible environment, and I um, I respect really that whole city, the vibe, the energy. I mean, and then when you got down there, I mean, we were. We were right into it, but yeah. I mean, we had we I had an event on Wednesday with uh, with Mankind, my my sponsor from the last uh, Indie GP earlier in the year. Did some go karting, and the go kart track there was great as well, and it was right across from where the street course was, so the actual oh, Indie car race track. So we had a great time nice. overall, and uh, and then as soon as you got down there, you know, we got to get real competitive out here on the you know on the ping pong courts. Yeah, man, courts yeah, or yeah. tables. <laughs> <laughs> so I got down there on Thursday. And real quick before before we get into that, I got I got to tell a story. I've been waiting to tell you uh, about my drive down there on, uh, on Thursday. Oh. So I'm probably I don't know 44, 45 miles out from Nashville. Okay, heading south, closing in and closing in. You know, I'm like feeling good because you know you, you, you hit, can smell can, the margaritas. Can already. Smell the margaritas. <laughs> you know, you get you get into Kentucky a little bit, and you get, you know you you, you kind of start not literally dozing off but mentally you're just kind of checking out right you're like just i'm gonna keep driving anyways it's a three-lane road okay 
and then it's merging down into two lanes. I'm good. I'm in the spot I'm supposed to be, all right? And all of a sudden, as that, that lane starts to end, to my left, out of nowhere, comes a white pickup truck, like a landscaping truck that has one of those shield guards on the front of it. Kid you not, bumps my door, bends my uh, driver's side mirror, Luckily, it was a Honda. You know, it was nice. My car, I got a nice car. It's got one of those flexible mirrors, right? So yes. it didn't just snap off. So it just bent it sideways. I got white scrapes on my car. The car just literally just stuffed me, as you guys say. You know, like I, I got stuffed by this car, and he just went right around me. And, and I was like, I was freaked. I couldn't I, believe it. And this is happening on a highway. On a highway. And he just keeps on going? Like Three, you didn't yep. you didn't start throwing hands? Well, okay, so oh. yeah, three-lane road coming down to two. This dude just says, hey, I got to make it, I guess. Screw this little, you know, black Honda Civic. Just sends it right down into me. Like I said, it scrapes my car. Hit, uh, I think there's a little bit of a dent. Bumps my mirror uh, and turns it. And then he just hauls ass right in front of me and gets in the lane right in front of me. So, of course, I'm pissed, obviously. Well, yeah. Right? I'm, I mean, that's contact. I'm, Car-to-car I'm, contact. I'm irate. Right. Yeah. But as I'm like hauling ass to get up there towards him, I realize that this man has like two or three uh, chainsaws in the back of his truck because it's like a landscaping duty thing. <laughs> That's not important. Well, <laughs> so I get up next to him and I was, I, I calmed down a little bit because I'm like, look, I can't do anything too crazy because if that dude's crazy enough to just send it into me like that, what's going to happen if we like, he's, you know, maybe he tries to bump me, maybe he sends me off the road and then he has chainsaws and I don't know. Yeah. I was like, I'm not going to get too crazy. Yeah, he's in the bigger vehicle. That, right. That's a t- that, you, you got you got to evaluate that situation. If you're if you're in the smaller vehicle, mm-hmm. you know, if you're in the less capable for vehicular combat type situation, yes, you got to weigh the weigh the outcomes. Yes, and I did that. So I got up next to him. I was just debating: do I flip him off? Do I just what I do? I saw he had another guy in the car. So it was two versus one. They had the larger car and they had chainsaws. So I said. Yeah, but like that is a you could have. I bet you could have called the police while you were driving and said, "Hey, this guy literally just hit me and is still going here." I know. I didn't. That would have been a lot of effort. A lot of. I, a lot how of do they track him down? I guess license plate number, anyways. Yeah. So I just get him next to him and I just look and I just throw my hands up, you know, and I'm just looking at him as I go by, and um, that was pretty much it. But you know, I just couldn't believe. It. I'm like 40 miles out from Nashville. I'm ready to go. I this, feel bad for. I, that's horrible. <laughs> he just stops me in like actual. <laughs> I'm still just blown away that happens. Like uh, that that is why I'm convinced seventy five percent of the drivers that are out on the road right now should never have a license. <laughs> I, at least the like procedure seventy five percent. At least the procedure to get a license needs to maybe be thought uh, about. More thought about. A little yes. bit more lengthy of a process. That's terrible. I I, ha- I had a very similar situation, but it was on the racetrack yeah. during the event that weekend, <laughs> right. where everyone hit everyone and we all hit everything. So yeah, uh, that was a very similar type of scenario. Definitely. Okay, so Thursday a lot of car is, contact. A lot in Nashville of this car. Weekend. Holy smokes! Yeah, Thursday night though, me and you uh, at uh, J New uh, Brosif's uh, ping pong tournament. Great event. What, yes, raised like one hundred forty thousand dollars for the kids. Right, the kids. Or something. Serious for kids. those kids, serious fun kids, or yeah. something. Uh, so a lot of money raised, a lot of good folks there. Um, but we did get hustled. We did, man. But we had a buy. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a little confused as to how they set up this bracket system. Very much like the NCAA tournament, it's a bracket type scenario. You got one seeds, you got four seeds, or whatever, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Of course, New Garden was the one seed. I don't think they were based on skill. Most of them, mm-hmm. because Joey and I. I mean, we got there a little late. To be fair, we got there right That's on true. the verge yeah. of of. And I had about three other events that we were we were doing that night. We just come from Margaritaville, I think. I was at Margaritaville doing some. I was uh, doing a little little uh, podcasting or serious XMing. I'm not really sure. Oh, so you did Margaritaville before and after? No, did does that after? That Maybe after. Margaritaville was after. Was Look, after. I'm confused. I was doing something before. You were. I was doing. Maybe you it was an autograph, autograph session. Yeah. Yep. Now we're, we're putting all these things together. That's what <laughs> happens in Nashville. Your brain gets scrambled. Literally a scrambled egg. Um, and and so when we got there, a lot of elite athletes there that I did not know were going to be there. A lot of elite athletes, celebrities of sorts, football players, former football players, people that were on The Bachelor, which I didn't know about. There was one which guy one was there that? who was on The Bachelor. He had cool. He had a great beard and a cool face, and he was shredded, obviously. Cool face. Yeah, it's just obviously he just looked better than us. Yeah, you know what I mean? Of course. About, he was about six three. 
His his lady friend that was there looked like she should have been his lady friend, yeah. you know, because okay. she was probably the most attractive woman that was there. Um, and we got into this our first round matchup after the bye. Obviously, first round mm-hmm. bye, we felt great. We got to watch a little bit of the competition, see what's going on. People really are moving. People yeah. are moving around. They're they're ping pong guys. We all watched the Olympics. We saw the ping pong. We saw you had to be quick, quick with your hands, quick with your brain, your eyes, all those things. But we went up against Sebastian Saavedra, former IndyCar driver, who you did not who you did not know, right? No. Yeah, he's he started several, many Indy 500s. Okay. Uh, I've known Sebastian for a very long time. Good guy. Did not know he was a very good ping pong player, very which good. was very upsetting. Yeah. And I didn't know who his teammate was. I didn't not, not 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 a clue. Again. I thought he was a literal tennis player. That's how good he was. Cool looking guy. Mm-hmm. Tall. Built like, you know, built like an elite athlete. Uh, great hair. You know, incredible, incredible hair on him. And um, and I literally had no idea who this guy was. Like, we didn't even, inter- like, I think we might have introduced ourselves before. Like, hey, man, like, what's up? What's yeah, what's just doing? like first name. That My name's Connor. Yeah, like, right. hey, Ryan, how's it going? Whatever. I found out later that evening, though, that he's one of the captains of the Nashville Predators <laughs> NHL team. And I was like, <laughs> oh, so, oh, so, yes, you are uh, elite with your hands yes. and your eyes and all those things that you need to be to be elite. So Easy. we got hustled. This yeah. guy was this guy was making the ball do three sixties, going backwards, upside down, all kinds of sideways. And, and I, I thought I, I just thought we got hustled. We started sweating, but we were playing well for a little. Well, the middle stint of the game, we started playing well. We had a nice little run where there's yeah. some good uh, volley going good back volley. and forth. Uh, but yeah, the dude from uh, the Predators. I mean, he had backhand. He Ryan had... Johansson was his name. Ryan Johansson, yeah, Canadian man. fella, now lives in Nashville, twenty nine years old. He looked like like when, whenever you hear the name Ryan Johansson, you yeah. have an image in your head, and that's exactly I, that's, what he looked that's like. That's actually a great description <laughs> of it. He looked exactly like, yep, that's freaking Ryan Johansson. That guy, my big big fella, big guy yeah. with the curly, luscious hair. Yeah. absolutely yeah. does great with the women. Yes. I saw it later that night mm-hmm. at the evening party. Okay, at yeah, Margaritaville or after that? Oh, after that, you did, I didn't. I was did invited you, to that. No, I think you should. I think you could. I don't think it was. I don't, didn't I text you about that? I think you did. It was at Kid Rocks. A little oh, celebration. <laughs> it was a <laughs> IndyCar somebody. private party, apparently. So, like, okay. you know, for some of the drivers, if they wanted to, but none of them showed up because they're all, you know. Responsible. No, they're all just boring. I, I'm just disappointed in them because <laughs> this is an incredible event that the series put on. That was not late at night. It was about, you know, 8.30. It, it really wasn't, yeah. 8, 8.30, maybe. I left before 10. Yeah. But it, you know, they had some food up there. They had some live music. Great people to meet. Met some Nashvilleites, Nashvillians, or whatever they are. Um, and and I, I, I talked to our pal Ryan. Ryan was up there. Ryan, uh-huh. and, I, and then once we started talking a little bit, I met uh, again. Met some incredible people. Met the guy who runs uh, all of Justin Timberlake's investments. Apparently, oh, uh, very nice guy. Brad, I think his name was. Incredible man. A lot of money in that. We had a great conversation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I well, think he's probably doing okay. Justin's not poor. <laughs> yeah. Great conversation with this guy. Uh, saw another uh, gentleman who was wearing a Connor Daly t-shirt. I was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. That's me. Looked directly at my face, and I don't think he had any idea who I was at all. <laughs> and so I found out later after uh, a man by the name of Justin Marks introduced us. Justin Marks owns a Track House, which is a NASCAR team. Long time, he just okay. bought Ganassi's NASCAR team. Ah, yes. Uh, big, big operation over there now. Justin Marks, very smart, incredible man, and knows a lot of the business folk in Nashville. So it turns out this man, Drew, uh, I think either owns Kid Rocks or owns several of the places down there. Uh, great human being, and his son had type 1 diabetes like me. So he's oh, cool. like, hey, didn't know who you were, but as soon as I heard you had diabetes, boom, we bought all your gear. I said, I love that. That's awesome. So that was a cool uh, interaction. So again, meeting people, mm-hmm. having a great time. Ryan's out there. Then I figure out who Ryan is. Then I realize, hey, we're both out here, twenty year old, twenty nine year old, um, you know, single males out in the streets of Nashville. There's a lot of fun activities to be pursued. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He proceeded to get, you know, nice and lit nice up. and lit up that night, yeah. which I respect, honestly. I mean, it's a Thursday night. We Let's did not go. trade phone numbers, sadly. I did send him a DM later, but he did not respond, <laughs> which is sad because I thought we would have been best friends that weekend. <laughs> did he see it? No, so he did okay. not even see it. But I heard from other ladies in town um, that this man 
has a very cool house and he has his own bar at the house and i and i really respect that honestly yeah. and it's got its own merch as well there was a man that came out sunday night wow. who was wearing merch to said bar i will not name it because i don't know how i don't know if this is like a speakeasy type mm. thing you know what i mean okay. that uh, you have to know one know someone to yeah. get there but uh, really respect Ryan Johansson from the uh, Nashville Predators. I, am I a Predators guy? No, but will I be? Maybe now. Yes, potentially. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that was gotta... it. Was that night in general, Joey? I tell you what, met a lot. Of, met Morgan Wallen that night. No shit. Yep. Morgan Wallen was there. A kid Rock. Nice Rock's? guy. Yeah. Met Kid Rock. Kid Rock. Great guy. Cool hat on him. Great. Great. He's got a great hat game. Kid Rock was there. Did you meet Guy Fieri? I heard he was there. No, he was not there. Was I did not, not meet Guy Fieri. I saw him though. I was walking back, and he was front row. At, I think a place called AJ's. Yeah, he was cooking. Do you know how? He? No, he was. My just... friends that said Stephen and Deepu, my friends, they said the Guy Fieri cooked them something. Oh, what? <laughs> Which sounded Probably. awesome. I mean, um, but yeah, I'm walking back. Of course, like you said at the start, all the windows are just open, right? Love Nashville. So yeah. you 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 just look inside, and then literally probably from me to our producer john back there like i mean there's guy fieri and he's front row at this you know live live concert going on and the man just looks like he's having the best time of his life he, that guy parties though, yeah for sure yeah like I, I met him once at the nba all-star game uh great man you can't have hair like that and not just rip it up you know I wonder. I really wonder how much that guy makes for like an appearance or like what because like you got to expect that people crave an interaction with guy fieri absolutely I mean, I don't know what it may, does he live in Nashville? Is he a Nashville guy? I, I feel like he lives like six different places. He might just be. I feel like he's everywhere. like a Vegas guy. Yeah. He was at the Sun stuff. Like he's an Arizona guy. Yeah. He's. What does that I, mean when you're everywhere at all times? Is that omnipotent? No, that's that's not the right no, word. No, that sounds right. I know because like God it's a is cool word. Omnipresent. Omnipresent. Yeah, Guy Fieri you know, like is omnipresent. Or something? I don't know. If those are real words, please send us the definition yeah. so those at some point. I, I think omnipresent sounds yeah. right. But well, that's awesome. Yeah, I got a text from Connor probably about nine fifteen. You know, nothing crazy, but he's just like, I love Nashville. I did. I tell you what. <laughs> I, one thing I will say about Nashville, though, in general, no matter who I met, everyone nice person. Like yeah. I, I would say, Indiana has great hospitality. They say the Midwest hospitality is very good. Yeah, who's your hospitality? I would say I hear a lot about that. But Nashville, I met so many people who were just nice people, and like, and some of them were like celebrities, like like you know, like those guys, the music yeah. folks, and couldn't have been nicer. And I, I really respect that. I I can see why that city is just bumping every day because mm-hmm. if everyone's having a great time, that's a place I want to go. You yeah. know what I mean? If if there's, if there's no one being a douche and there's no one being a dummy, I'm gonna go there. Don't be a douche or dummy. Yeah. See, that sounds like a country song already. <laughs> exactly. You, know? you can just we're walking down Broadway and hear some dude just you know letting it rip. Don't be a douche. Yeah. Don't be a dummy. See, come running around and bring your honey. You know oh, see, I mean? lots see, of honeys were being brought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lots of them were there. Yeah, and I, and I, you know what? Thursday night again, not something you expect to be this wild, crazy scene. I can barely find a scooter to wheel on oh, home, God, and I'm walking crazy. out there on the streets and like. I pass, I'm like, scooter, and yeah. I probably spent $150 on scooters this weekend. Oh, for sure. Scooter pie, Alex Rossi's dad was leaving dinner, and I said, hey, man, and he, I'm like going in the speed restricted zone, so I'm doing four mile an hour up the hill. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm just hitting home. You know what I mean? <laughs> I met uh, I met Peter Rossi this weekend. Good uh, good guy. Good, big brain in there, yeah. Big, big brain. Smart guy. Um, very kind of intimidating a little yes, bit. Yes, definitely. Um, he's wearing boss shoes. Oh, yeah. On the, you know, I was he's like, a gangster. Okay, this guy, yeah. is, he is a boss. He is, uh, oh, yeah. He's got to figure it out. You know, it screams like a guy who wears, you know, loafers with no socks a lot. Oh, <laughs> yeah. With those short trim pants, you know what I mean? And they're yeah. probably red. Him and uh, <laughs> him and his son, uh, they both have got like- Stylish they're, individuals. They're stylish and everything's just tailored to them. It all yeah. just fits incredibly well. Uh, but Thursday night, my Thursday night uh, was at Hinch and Rossi. I saw you at Margaritaville. Yep, uh, Margaritaville. You and it was a really good time at Margaritaville. Shout out to them. We watched Elio Castroneves eat a quesadilla on stage. Yeah. Wild. I never thought I would see that. Elio was there. Four uh, times. Tony Kanan was there. Um, Jack Harvey was there. Uh, so it was really, really, really awesome time there. And then me and Hinch and my buddy, we were kind of just shooting the shit a little bit afterwards. Um, 
you know, having fun. And uh, so then me and my buddy left, you know, Hench was being responsible as well. So me and my buddy who lives in Nashville, we went to Tin Roof to meet up with some other folks. Oh, there you go. So we're at Tin Roof on Broadway and I saw a woman trying to take a bite out of a man's private parts. Oh. Um, it was the lead singer of the band that was performing. <laughs> oh. So this man was like doing crowd work or he was going through the crowd and like, or just getting a drink. Yeah. I don't know. Getting everyone lubed up. Getting a little everyone bit, lubed up. You know so, I mean? um, but all of a sudden I look to my left and the lead singer has a mic and he's right there. And this chick on like a bachelorette party or whatever, just like goes down into catcher's stance. Okay. Yeah. Just puts, puts her face right in there. Just, really? just a, just a wide open mouth. That's I was it. like, I mean, he didn't have, you know, it was I, covered. Yeah. He had jeans yeah, on yeah, yeah, and yeah. everything, but I was like, Severe denim wall. Was there, yeah. <laughs> Severe denim wall. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, she still went for it. I'm like, I just, you know, I looked at Tim Durham and, and my buddy. I'm like, I mean, <laughs> this is Nashville. <laughs> went in Nashville, I guess. Yeah. So that, that really set the scene for the weekend. You know, it was just, that was it, huh? It was, yeah, pretty live well performances here in Nashville. Mm-hmm. It was, yeah. I mean, I, I, I that does not surprise me at all because I think um, people seem to really just be excited to, to do really whatever they want to do in Nashville, as long as they don't end up in jail. Not a lot of like police activity out there either. They were, they were there, like they were, they were keeping a watchful eye, but it's not like you were seeing a bunch of people dead on the streets or, you yeah. know, it was, it was like a cool environment. It was yeah. nice. I, 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 and we shut the streets down really. That's true. Yeah. And I, you know, I, 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 uh, did it like a weekend recap blog and I, and I, titled it you know indycar took over nashville this weekend and i had some chick that was just like oh yeah of course because everyone there in nashville was there <laughs> for indycar and i was like okay obviously not but like mm-hmm. but there we, were sixty thousand we, people that were <laughs> there were sixty thousand people that were at the race and there was over a hundred and ten thousand people who were ticketed for the weekend you know events to go down there so you get triple digit you know thousand figure that's pretty big yes i, I and and i i picked up that same vibe going there Lots of people there probably had no idea that there was an IndyCar race going yep. on, but there were a lot of people who did know that there was an IndyCar yep. race there, and there was a lot of people that were at the track every day. Like when we get into you know track activities, Friday Friday for us is normally just a practice day, right? Mm-hmm. Like here we go. We had one session, just one little practice. We first time on the track, check it out, hit the streets. I crashed. Uh, a couple other everyone, a, lot, a couple other people crashed. It was uh, kind of like it was. It wasn't a crash. It was kind of just like a little bump. I crashed. Like, okay. Yeah, I, I slid into the <laughs> tires. Um, but it, it was something that when when I drove by over those first few laps, and you see the grandstands because kind of you, you we do a couple little warm up laps, mm-hmm. a little bit of hey, all right, see what's going on here. None of us had been here before, so we're taking a lot in, getting some visual reference points, etc. And when I when you saw the grandstands being full on a Friday, I was like, this is. This is it. Like this is this is what every this is what being a professional motor racing series is all about. Like we want to we want to pack the stands. We want to entertain the people. We want to bring in potentially a bunch of new fans that had not been to an IndyCar race before. And that energy was matched all weekend. Yep. I mean, Saturday full. We just just for qualifying, boom, full. And even when we left the track on Saturday, people were still in the grandstands. I don't know why. There was nothing else going on, but we were they were still there, kind of just hanging out. There were some c- country concerts yep. that people were kind of watching. Mm-hmm. Um but it was it, it it was it was awesome to see that type of attendance and especially in a city that not only has stuff going on down the Broadway Street all the time, but you know, to shut down some streets, maybe make some traffic, you know, traffic was a little annoying for some people, I'm sure. Some Uber drivers yep. had expressed to me, "Hey, yeah, you know, this is wild, but it's pretty cool. Like there was a couple of Uber drivers that were like, hey, sure. this is wild. You know, it's brand new to a lot of these people because part of IndyCar's deal right now is we are a we are a decently known sport. It's 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 the largest event in the world. Uh-huh. But like I even had someone ask me, they're like, So like you do the Indy five hundred, but then like what are, what are all the what are these? And I'm like, Well, this is another IndyCar race. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. like we're trying to put those pieces together for people, and this is a great way to do it. It's like, hey, this is the Music City Grand Prix. And they're like, oh, sweet. Well, what, what is that a part of? Well, the IndyCar series, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was it was something that I, I will never forget because it it made us feel cool, you know what I mean? It's like, all right, hey, like when you when you, when you want to go out there and perform at a high level, right, you, whether you're a football player, basketball player, when you get the, the crowd, very energizing, right? Mm-hmm. Very, very energizing. Passionate fans. 
We had a lot of passionate fans. Like, a lot of people from Indiana came down, for sure. Yep. But even those new fans, like, we had some people come up to me at the U.S. Air Force uh, place in their little setup in the fan zone. They're like, hey, this is our first time here. Like, we, we're first, it's our first race. This is awesome. And a couple of people at the autograph session as well Thursday night were like, hey, we don't even know what's going on here. So we cheer <laughs> for you. And I said, yep, sure. We said, what, what do we got going on? I said, well, this is IndyCar racing, baby. I said, all right, let's go. And so – yeah. It's it's opportunities like that that we hope that we don't you know that we take advantage of and, and I really think we did. Now the race was a bit of a clown show, but it doesn't matter because the people were there and mm-hmm. like and and they they experienced the weekend. And I think even even if they were a new IndyCar fan, they saw well, a lot of yellow flags, but that's a lot of details. There was still a lot of cool stuff that was going on, and it was exciting because there were some crashes and some craziness. Now for us race enthusiasts, I understand it was not a great race. Because it wasn't, but those are things that we can work on. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, we build on that. It's yeah. like, all right, boom, you're one done, fine. Were, were there some terrible things that happened? Yeah. Were there some, you know, some adjustments that we could make to the track? Absolutely. But you got to get through year one. Yep. And that, like we talked about last week, you were like, I, you know, I just want it to be a really good event. You know, like the the race is going to be, it could be anything. You know, yeah. but, but you want it to be the grandstands packed. You want it to be people having fun. You want it to be people having, you know, excitement for the weekend and all that was there. And then some, I mean, I know that you obviously were very busy, you know, doing your job, um, and, and being in the paddock area, and everything like that. But I was walking around not only, you know, Broadway, but then over the pedestrian bridge and then over, uh, to, to where, um, you know, all the, all the, um, what are they? The like the merchandise, zone, yep. the fan zone, all that's going on. And like you, like you said, I mean, even an hour before the first practice on Friday, people were already sitting up there. Huge. People were walking around everywhere. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, all the Ubers that I took, all the different, you know, gas stations and places that I went into over the weekend, it was all, you know, you in town for the race or hey, this is pretty yeah. wild, you know, same thing. So it was a talk of the town, man. I mean, both, you know, for the drivers, for people who were there for the race. And so that's why I said, it's not, <laughs> you know, you can make all the jokes you want about how, uh, you know, oh yeah, a bunch of people were there in Nashville for IndyCar, but they were, they literally yeah, like, were and they showed that's it. actually <laughs> a fact. It's not like, it's not like, oh, Hey, like. 100,000 people were in the bars. It's like, no, 110,000 people or whatever it was were in the event, like in Take the grandstands. Take it in to go, down, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to go down there. And you could tell, too. Like, I, I think – I hope they do set up the paddock a little bit differently because it didn't seem like there was as much paddock access or it wasn't as easy for fans to interact with us as, as it normally is. Well, those were – I mean, I, I hear those prices were just through the roof. Well, and, and, I, and I don't know the pricing on paddock passes, but – I mean, there it, it was hard, like, for us, like, it was hard to see us, right? Like, we were up against a fence, essentially. And so, like, people were on the other side of the fence, and, yeah. like, they could see some of the sports cars and stuff that were going on. But, uh, but yeah, that's one thing that I think, uh, again, it could be adjusted, right? It, we we could figure that out. Um, but I, I would love to see a little bit more paddock access just so we can get some people in there and, and get them up close to the cars because that's what's really cool about, like, Detroit uh, and, and St. Pete. Yeah, mid-Ohio, like – People can kind of get up pretty close. It definitely met Ohio, and uh, and yeah, I, I think I think we could do a better job with that. But I mean, uh, I, I also one thing I wanted to hear about from you though. Yeah, you had your own party. I did, and there were a couple people out in the streets that I was you know interacting with and talking to. They're like, oh yeah, that barstool guy, he's got a party on Saturday <laughs> night. It's gonna be a big one apparently. And I and I saw the graphic, great graphic. Thank you. And uh, and I was like, oh yeah. I think I know that guy. Yeah, yeah a little that's, bit. That's Joey. Yeah. And so, w- was it a was it a scene over there? It was. It was a scene. <laughs> <laughs> I really and understandably so. Uh, you had a very important day the next day, but I really, really wish you could have been there. Uh, I wish it could have been maybe even Sunday night. We would have had it. You know, just that's so we next could have year. Everybody. We got to do that yeah, Sunday night for sure. I mean, shout out to to Tin Roof uh, Nashville off of. Um, Demumbrian. I, Demumbrian. Yeah. I thought it was Demon Braun. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, didn't know how to pronounce it, but so it's not Demon the Demon Braun Street. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not the one that is right on Broadway. It's the one a couple blocks over Midtown, right? I think so. Yeah, that's and, what I was um, being told. It's it, it's like the original one. The, you know, Tin Roof. Oh, we have one in Indianapolis. There's one in Louisville. You know, it's it's kind of a it is a chain now, but that is like the OG first Tin Roof. That it was at, and so um, I went there on Tuesday night. By the way, that oh, was okay. where I I took my first uh, White Walker shot, which I had never had. Before. What's that? I don't know what it is. 
Okay. But it tasted delicious. Okay. And I was told by these the, these uh, these uh, young females that were there that I needed to have those. Okay. White Not water. great for diabetes, I will say. I don't think. I think there's ah, a lot sugary. of sugar in there. Yeah. But it was delicious. I'm mm-hmm. not going to lie. I don't know what's in there at all, but that was apparently what I had to do at the tin roof in Midtown. But now, okay, so you have the visual, and obviously you've been to the one in Indianapolis. Oh, yeah. Like the one that we were at off uh, Dimmon Bruin or whatever. <laughs> I, I, I will never know how to say the that. Mumbrian. The Mumbrian. The Mumbrian. The Mumbrian. The Mumbrian. Yeah. Uh, it was very spacious. Like it was yes. very, you know, a lot of room to operate uh, compared to how the one in Indy is kind of, and even the one in Broadway in Nashville is kind of tight quarters. Yeah. Um, that's not the way that this one was. And, um, you know, I tell you what, once it got to be about nine o'clock that night, the whole back was just shoulder. I mean, shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. Crazy. You know, I, I want to thank, uh, Logan and, um, Josh, who who set it up the GM and and the, the main bartender down there? They hooked it up big time, and and <laughs> me and my buddies. Did you I guys have a time? Huh? We had a time Were you up on the stage at all. Like, did you get to I like say, not. "Hey, thanks everyone, I love America." <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't. I already had my cowboy hat on. Oh. I didn't want to draw too much attention. What was you that know? attire called again? That you wore to Ray Hall's <laughs> Nashville party? Nashville Barbecue Casual. <laughs> Dude, I knocked the doors <laughs> off of that party. <laughs> I you freaking look good. Thanks, man. I, was I brought that also the, Saturday night or no? no? That was okay, Friday, Friday night. night. I brought the heat, man. People were like, you know, some people, I, uh, you know, they kind of had the cowboy look on. I was like, nah, <laughs> fuck that, dude. I was like, I'm going with it. Yeah. And uh, you know, so I got a few compliments uh, that night, which was nice. Very but respectable then, outfit. Um, thank the, you. The shirt. I, w- I would like to know where that shirt was from. Duvin. Goodwill. D u v i n. Oh. No, it's a super great. Oh. They they messaged me a while back and they were like, hey, you want us to send you some shirts? I was like, cool. They look great. <laughs> And they were like, cool, pick some out on our site. And so I went and I saw the one with the checkered flag. I was yep. like, I literally said to them, I said, I will wear that every day of the month of May. I love that. And so they sent it to me. So shout out to them. But it was a great time, man. Had way too much fun. I know the bartender uh, ladies were getting pissed down there because I think me and my buddies just like <laughs> went way over our limit. <laughs> oh, you had a tab. We had a, a tab. certain tab. Yeah. You could, yeah. We had a tab. So uh, I think we went over that a little bit. But that uh, I mean, like they're making Sunday money night. hand over fist, dude. Like, you know, I mean, the place yeah. was just absolutely packed. So I had heard, a, speaking of making money in bars, this is uh, this is big uh, big finance talk here on the, uh, oh, on wow. the Speed okay. Street yeah, yeah. or whatever we're calling it. <laughs> Uh, I've heard that that so Kid Rock's bar there was there was there was people saying that that place makes thirty five million dollars a year. That's a lot of money. I could believe that. And that like Tootsie's and the 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 owner of the Tootsie's place, or whatever, his bars consume more Bud Light than anyone else in the world. Can also believe that. I, I could. Be, I was like, yeah, I could believe that. Mm-hmm. I, I've saw I saw lots of Bud Lights out there. Did you make it to Acme Feed and Seed at all? No, but I heard that was a place that you had to go for Instagrams, right? Someone I mean, said it was very vibey. Like you got to go there if you want to have like a cool Instagram story. Well, it's just it's the the location's so prime because it's literally on that corner of Broadway. So yeah. you're overlooking the water, you're overlooking the bridge, you're overlooking the entire street of Broadway. Um, and so that's where we hit. We actually ran into uh, Kelly uh, Mossop and Becky Hinch and oh. um, Tim Durham. We ran into them there. Drivers' wives and Tim. Yeah, and Tim. We ran into them there. Um, And so that yeah, next time you go down, we'll have to hit that. But party was great. Shout out to those guys. Way too much fun. Uh, But then the next day, dude, I mean, I was just, it was. Did you even go to the race? (laughs) (laughs) I don't even think I saw you on race day. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Joey Joey partied so hard on Saturday. He's like, "Wow, well, I, I, we actually we didn't even make it to the IndyCar race." Well, <laughs> a lot of my friends barely made it. I <laughs> for a second there, I honestly didn't know because on Sunday I was with Tim and Becky and Kelly again, and we were across the bridge um, at this place called Mainstay, and I was literally just dying. Like I, oh, I was tough. just just so down, so hard, man. Like running back and forth to the bathroom and everything, and just. But, I mean, I think what had happened is it's just Thursday night. I didn't go crazy, like, any of the nights. No. But it was just Thursday night, Friday, most of the day, Friday night, Saturday, all day, Saturday night. I was consistently- and it's very hot. It's very hot, but I was consistently always had, you know, a, a beverage, a beer, or something. <laughs> and so then all of a sudden it just, like, hit me on Sunday so badly. And um, Big party was, guy, Joey, out here. Hey, was, <laughs> you know what? Joey said he didn't go too hard. This guy had a two-seater ride that he was scheduled to take. <laughs> this guy's puking his face off before he gets in the two-seater with Mario Andretti. How many people are doing that? This guy, he comes up to me, looks like he's sweating out his eye holes, and he's like, yeah, just puked and rallied in the, in the, in the porta potty 
And I'm like, hey, you know what? You got to do what you got to do pr- pr- to prepare your body for that type of act- activity. Uh, so I think it's a few things because <laughs> I, I did not get – that intoxicated on Thursday night. I was totally fine. Woke up. I felt okay. It was food poisoning. And yeah. and and so it's it's just deathly hot there, dude. Right? Like you said, it's so hot. And then you go and you put on this fire suit. And you know, for those who haven't had experience with doing two seaters at all, it's like it's not just like oh, you put on the fire suit, you hop in the car and go. No, like you put on the fire suit, you wait for like twenty five minutes, and then you finally get in line. You wait for like another fifteen minutes. It's, it's a annoying. process. Yeah, it's, and, it's a long process. And, and it's hot out there, man. Hot, yeah, yeah. hot, hot. And so all of that combined, and then I got in my head. I start thinking like I can't be like puking in you know on mario andretti <laughs> in the back of mario andretti's head you can't do it or in my yeah, helmet can't do it so i was like you know what i'm just gonna go force this out of me and make me feel better mentally and physically but yeah i'm talking to connor your lovely mom beth bowles is down <laughs> there we're talking all of a sudden i'm just like excuse me and i yeah. just like you know go to the port body take care of my business everything's fine <laughs> but again all i can start thinking about is just like not in the back of Mario Andretti's head. Not in the yeah, back just of Mario don't Andretti's do it. head. but then i didn't even get to go, go because there was like four minutes rained. of sprinkles yeah and then it all got shut down. I did feel bad that that happened because you got you would have got more laps on the track before me. <laughs> yeah. Two seaters were going before us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that so, was a, that was a scene for sure. I, I I respected you for being out there. I'm sorry that you didn't get to do your ride. It's all right. You know, I mean, I I've done I've done uh, you know the pinnacle. I've done Indy. Yeah. So well, you I'm know, sure next we'll time get you in another yeah, one there we'll some get point. down there. It's no big deal. But yeah, I mean, so that was the weekend. You know, Saturday was great. Sunday I was feeling like crap. Made it to the race. But let's let's. I I got so many questions about starting from Friday all the way through Saturday with qualifying. Sunday, obviously, yeah, we can talk race. about the actual race. Let's event. get into the actual race, <laughs> like a little bit. Man. Not, not. We don't want to go into it too much, but I would say the event itself. We, we raised a lot of questions. I think there's a lot of questions. Like the the first practice session, um, the track was really, really difficult to get to grips with. I think there's there's something about the track that uh, everything is very, very slow. Almost every single corner, except for two, are first gear corners, which is which are the slowest corners, and and probably the slowest corners that we have on our on our season, except for the Long Beach hairpin. Um, and it was quite bumpy coming off of the bridge because yeah. this is the first ever racetrack in the history of racing that really goes over a bridge and then off of a bridge. And so what I was being told actually afterwards is because sometimes I think it was very inconsistent. So you'd come off the bridge at 175 miles an hour, right? Yep. You're you're hauling speed, yeah. hauling butt cheeks, and um, and it would just slam the ground, and the car would be really really hard to drive as you're braking for these you know for these really really slow corners. And so what they were telling me is they were, they were like, well, the reason why it's inconsistent is because the bridge is moving. The bridge moves. Like they they build a bridge. I'm not a bridge bridge architect. Obviously, uh-huh. did not go to school for any type of architectural out, <laughs> outlook on anything. You know what I mean? Sure. But apparently, like they have these metal or these these certain inserts in the bridge that give it the ability to flex and move a little bit. And so that is kind of what they were saying is is it might be the problem because like we're talking millimeters that were we're millimeters from the ground so if that bridge has moved even just a mill like even just something we would feel that yeah um so it was very very interesting to hear that and i think after after day one as well they grinded some of the track uh after the first session because of how bumpy it was coming off the bridge <clears throat> and let me tell you it was sketchy like it, there were there were some moments you know i a lot of like patricio ward hit the wall smashed it pretty hard pretty aggressively and um, and then I, you know, I, 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 I tapped the wall first before like where Patricio Ward hit it, uh-huh. uh, but not as bad as him. And then two laps later, I, you know, we're trying to find a little bit of extra speed and we've never done that at this track before found the limit of the brake zone and, and we lost it immediately, but really because of, of, of rear brake locking, which is really strange for us. So there was a lot that that track caused, um, that we just weren't used to. Like, I think a, a lot of people were were confused and you saw as we went on even even in the next practice session in Saturday and then even in qualifying I mean you had guys it wasn't just a bunch of idiots crashing it was like you're talking you know Pagano's going off you're talking Scott Dixon spun twice and knocked the rear wing off his unit Joseph Newgarden freaking wrote the side off the thing in qualifying I mean we're talking really experienced good guys Alex Rossi had a huge crash like in qualifying like very very experienced guys you know making mistakes and and having big shunts and I think it just goes to show you how hard how hard it was to try and find the extra bit of time there. Um, and then when it came down to the race, you know, we 
immediately got into the, you know figuring out all right these restarts are going to be tough the starts are going to be tough people are hitting each other a little bit and then on the restart we saw Marcus Erickson fly through the air like I will never forget seeing that I tell you what I was coming up the hill a couple cars back from him okay and I we is like uh, all right green 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 and I see literally Marcus's car like above the fence flying like I was like oh, oh okay okay and then he like landed and they're like, uh, yeah, green, green, green. And I was like, what do you mean green, green, green? I said, there's parts everywhere. Like, we're, parts are flying. And, like, yeah. people had passed me. And then, like, 30 seconds later, they go yellow. And I'm like, me and Joseph actually both got screwed by that. Because Joseph and I were dodging parts and dodging people. And we got passed by a bunch of guys who literally just never lifted through this car, like, flying through the air. And yeah. I was like, all right, all right. So I assume there's going to be a reorder, right? And there wasn't. So there was a lot of questions. Now, can you, can you like... Uh, you know, go to IndyCar and say, "Hey, you know, can your team?" Yeah, we asked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and okay. they're like, "Nah," but uh, but I, I just I, I I think as soon as you see a car airborne, right? Boom, it's not green. You go yellow, right? Yeah, that's they, probably what it, what you'd have. It's a safer thing, like sure. if, just for safety, because that's a tight corner coming up. Um, but yeah, that didn't happen, and then I basically, you know, we we, we had more yellow, and then. A red flag mm -hmm. already straight straight into the race. We had a red flag. It's just a giant pile up in uh, in in turn eleven. Yeah, that was which wild I don't know if you watched it, but like it was uh, it was Simon and I believe my teammate Renus as well was in the wall. Um, uh, well, several people yeah. were in the wall. Uh, Jimmy got hit. Jimmy Johnson got hit. Uh, a lot of people. And so when it's stacked up like that, you can't go anywhere. It's, just, it's a parking lot, and cars easily stall. Uh, I kept my car running though. Nice. Kept it running. Use reverse in the race. A little bit, a little reverse. Yeah, I reverse saw, a little did. bit. I saw Hinch doing and then that a little bit. They, yeah. they, they got the, the one car moved, thankfully, out of the way. And I was about to make up like six spots. I was like, perfect. All these guys stalled. They're done. <laughs> Boom. I'm out. Here we go. Made up six spots. Even Joseph stalled it. But again, I got through there. I was the only one who kept my engine running. And but Too with, late. With the with, red? No. Like, the, the problem is, is when you get back to the pits, it's like, all right, cool. Like We ended up... You know, we went from like 20th to 12th or 14th or something like that. I was like, that's a great move. But uh, then the race control reorders people then instead of the, the first accident. So I have a lot of problems with race control because both Joseph and I, like every single time, we just had a lot of questions over over what where the reorder was coming from. Yeah. Um, and from then on, we had it. We, uh, me personally, like we had a great race strategically. Like we got up into the top three. We were in position for a podium, like like both me and Joseph. I, I saw Joseph's rear wing the entire race. Like we were just following each other uh, straight to the straight to the front, thankfully, and um, and just the way it worked out was every time there was a yellow, it kind of keeps changing things strategy wise. And technically, there are rules that say if the race is going a certain distance, it, it, it it's going to be a timed race. Like it can't be more than two hours. Okay. And so that rule was not followed. So my team was on, on you know, trying to figure out, hey, is this like, because you adjust your fuel strategy for the race end if it's a timed race. Yeah. But no, they decided to keep running all the laps. And I, I was in the car because I time it on my, uh, my heart rate monitor. I was in the car for three hours come the end of the race. So do you think that's just because it was the first one and for optics they were trying to, you know, I don't get know. the full thing? Or? I really don't know because I think, it was also dark. Like I, yeah. I, I did the mo the majority of the race with my visor open, but like at the end, it was because it got too dark. Like yeah. we had dark visors on, so it was a really, really interesting situation. And I think Joseph and I, I actually was just talking to Joseph Newgarden th uh, this morning because we were in a position essentially for for you know to be on the podium. And and when Colton crashed, sadly, that ruined our strategy because the guys, a lot of the guys up front, did not have enough fuel to make it to the end. And as soon as Colton crashed, that that means that those guys could have made it to the end. So mm. that was that was really really frustrating. Um, I think there are a lot of things that you know we saw after that weekend. You had guys you know that were making mistakes. You know, even Colton. I mean, Colton was so much faster than everyone, and yeah. still the track is so difficult that even him, you know, he he became a victim of you know of, of the racing surface. So let's. I I think it, to, to recap to to kind of cap it all off though. Tough, a lot of things that were going on, a lot of things that can be fixed. But when we got on those little trucks for driver intros at the beginning of the race yeah. as well, the most energy I think I've ever seen from some grandstands. Like me and Renus, my teammate, were riding together, and these people were going crazy. Like every grandstand was Love like, it. yeah. 
yeah. like and I was like let's go it was it was it was incredible energy it's just so much people that were just excited to, to to see us there and to see us racing which I think is awesome awesome uh, yeah I was um I was down in the pits for when driver introductions were going on so I didn't get to see all of that but uh that's great to hear man yeah I mean I saw the replay it was like I put it in my blog I was like it looked like something you'd see in Indy, in May, yeah, uh, you know, shoulder to shoulder, people waving hats High everywhere energy. as you guys went by. You know, I mean, the, fantastic the energy, the appreciation seemed to be there. Okay, so all that being said, do you yes. think twenty twenty two, twenty twenty three, is is the Music City GP going to continue? Well, I think they're already in a three year contract anyway. Oh, really? So, so yeah, so that's that's great. Um, and from what I've heard, part of the part of the track is actually only a temporary um, fix. Apparently, the the really really narrow section turns five, six, seven, whatever. That might be uh, changed as they do some local construction, some local road construction. So, I think again, were there some negatives, and 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 the real real aggressive race fans were like, oh yeah, it was a terrible race. You know, way too many crashes, way too many yellows, and it's like. Well, that's not on the series. That's really on the drivers, and and that's on the the the, the toughness of the track. So, I think a lot of it is on us, and a lot of it, it, a lot of the way it was reordered and the way it was. I have a lot of questions on race control. On hey, why do you open the the pit lane was sometimes faster than the actual race track. So some guys were making up some time in pit lane when they pitted instead of you know, dropping back. And how does a guy who literally ran over someone ruin someone else's race, gets a penalty, but can take it under yellow. How does that guy end up winning the race? I mean, it's, you know, crazier things have happened. And I, you know, I was happy for Marcus, but, um, yeah, just a lot of questions, but that's fine. It's, 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 it's race one, everything race one in Nashville and not everything's going to be perfect. Right. Would you say, so you mentioned five, six, seven, is that the toughest portion of the track? What was it, what was the hardest on you physically? The hardest you know strategy for you to operate through? Well, the the the, the problem with five six seven is just it was so slow that you, there's no airflow and there's no room to really do much other than uh, you know you can't pass anyone there you can't do anything uh, aggressively. Um, but the 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 most physically challenging part wasn't actually driving around the corners. It was just the fact that you were going slow enough for so long that there's not a lot of air. So it was it was one of the hottest races that I've I've been involved yeah. in um, for sure, and you know if we had probably gone if and if it would gone you know more green the whole time yes it, we would have finished sooner but also it was going to be tough because I, I I mean we were losing a lot of water weight that's for sure I was I was definitely cramped up after the race and um, you know it's, it's challenging mainly because of the heat but so uh, that, were- that was about it. You were able to have like two beverages and already feel it then. Uh, after well, look, was- I had more than two beverages <laughs> Sunday night. We had a great time at uh, at Kid Rock's place Sunday <laughs> night. It was a quite a scene. And as they said, the the tab situation that you had on Saturday night, yeah. right or whatever, yeah, they gave you a certain limit. Well, I got there and I said, "Look, man, I'm just starving." Because we we the the race went forever. Like oh, it, it was God, dark. Yeah. By the time I left, and so I just went to the hotel. I actually crawled in my shower because my legs didn't function. My <laughs> legs had cramped up. So I crawled in a cold shower to try to just get my body cleaned Yeah, and started drinking as much water as possible. Um, but we went to Kid Rock's place with our with our pal Drew and Brad, who I'd met earlier who, at the at the Thursday night party. Yeah. And, um, and I said, hey, man, I'd love to have some of my friends up here, some people, whatever. And he's like, yeah, that'd be awesome, whatever works. And uh, and so we get there. We're hanging out for a little bit. I, I get some food. Oh, it was incredible food. Yeah. Incredible food. And then they're like, hey, we're going to leave. And about that time, there was about six of us up there, me and my friends. And so- So you're up on like the, the level up. Level the, two, yeah, just yeah, overlooking yeah. the stage, There you right? go, yeah. And they're like, hey, man, the tab's open. Just whatever you guys need. Just kind of hang out and whatever. I was like, oh, my gosh, that's awesome. But as the night goes on, obviously, you know, it's 10, 10, 30. There's about 20, 30 people. Robbie Gordon shows up with, like, mm. his 12-year-old kids, <laughs> which I was blown away at. I didn't, just two kids at the bar having, you know, well, at this, this bar scene having some food, having some chicken chicken wings, stuff like that. I was like, I respect that. I saw a few actual infant children, like babies on yeah. Saturday at Kid Rocks. So, exactly. You know, well, I, which I, I respect that policy. Yeah. Um, and and a lot of my friends, I, I I don't know what the bar tab was going to be, but we were there for probably a solid three hours, mm-hmm. and there was lots of Bud Lights consumed, lots of drinks consumed, lots of nachos ordered, and so I have to give a big shout out to the folks at Kid Rocks because that place, that was an incredible time, and uh, I did not get any text the next day saying, hey, uh, you guys uh, spent a little <laughs> bit too much. I even sent them a text the next morning. I said, hey, man, 
if I owe you anything on that, like, let, let me know, please, because I know we had a lot more friends. I had about the entire city of Indianapolis up there at one point. Yeah. So it was uh, it was an incredible, incredible way to celebrate and then also watch Marcus Erickson very soon afterwards sing on stage at the Honky Tonk Place as well. No that joke. That was very nice. Really? Marcus Erickson got very, very inebriated, which I respect because that's what you do when you win races. You celebrate. Yes. And Marcus was celebrating. And I good. love to see a good Marcus celebration. We had a great time until we shut the streets of Nashville down about 3 in the morning. What song did he sing? You remember? Uh, Not a clue. No. <laughs> Might have been Sweet Caroline. He's just up there. Hey, can't go know. wrong with that, man. Yeah. That's, a, that's a great sing-along. The, the lady singer was like, you are a beautiful man. Where are you from? Because Marcus obviously looks like he was carved out of a, a sculpture. You know, Very he's sculpted. carved out of like rock yes. or stone. He's got great hair. Yeah. And they're like, oh my gosh, like you, were, where where are you from? He's essentially the more fit version of me. Like he's the more sculpted version. Like there are a lot of similarities <laughs> there between me and Marcus Erickson physically. Really? Right. <laughs> Sure. Blonde hair, blue eyes, pale yeah, skin. We'll, we'll go with that. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said he's the more fit yeah, version. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> he looks like he's built to be a bobsledder, though. You look like you're built to play on the, you know, the, the like, let's say, middle linebacker position. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm the Americanized <laughs> version. Whatever. All right. Uh, let's get into a few listener questions yes. here to wrap it up because we've been uh, talking we long some, about racing. Some, yeah, we had some good ones. Um, you mentioned it. This is from Nick underscore J underscore seven seven three. Should the restart zone for the race been over the bridge like the start of the race was? I was actually thinking about that this morning. Um, I I think so. Yeah. The only problem we run into then is people trying to back people up in the really really tight section, which you're already like under safety car. We were already so slow there, we almost had to clutch in, uh, and that makes you know that could make people stall. That could make some issues happen. Um, but yeah, I I think for next year for sure they look at making the restart zone the same place where they did the starts because the problem with having it where it was is that was such a heavy break zone. It's so easy to pop out and try to pass someone and. Uh, you just you just cause a bunch of melees like we saw. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I mean, even I don't know shit about racing, but I was like, it seems kind of weird that yeah. it's not over the. You well, know, it's also wide it's also on the drivers though. It comes down to the drivers again. Like if if they wanted to stop that earlier, then the the leader goes earlier. Like go out go out of nine instead of going out of ten. You know what I mean? From uh, Jeremiah Morrill, the turn three liquid was it water? Oh. Booze, something truly terrible. Have been heard rumors of porta potty spill. I have no idea, but when I saw that under yellow, I said, "What else could happen?" <laughs> under yellow, in case you didn't know, there's water starting to spew from this hospitality arena that was basically at the apex of Turn Three, and the water was like in a really bad place. Like it was in like exactly where we need a lot of grip to go down the front straightaway onto yeah. the bridge, and so they had to spend a lot of time there. I assumed it was like. Oh, we're just going to dump the coolers out the back and see what happens. And then all of a sudden they stopped the race. It was like, it was a crazy scene, but I, I will ask the safety team next week what that liquid was. Was it piss? Was it Bud Light? Was it water? Yeah. I mean, on TV, cause at this point I was watching on TV and there was no, you know, it, it was just, like you said, it was just coming from that yeah. like VIP tent area. So there, there was no you know indication of what it could have been, and obviously yeah. it's liquid and that's <clears throat> gone on the concrete. So there's no like color or anything like great. that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, you know, uh, Townsend Bell was actually he, he was talking. He was like ser- seriously talking about, hey, that that might be beer. You know? Yeah, <laughs> that might be big machine vodka. There it is. That's out there. So yeah. Uh, from Ryan to Gray, if you could change one thing for 2022 in Nashville, what would it be? Um, that's a great question. I, I I don't, I don't really know yet. I would say restart zone for sure. I would say, um, try to get us a little bit of a smoother, uh, basically break zone for turn nine. Um, and other than that, I mean, I don't know, try to get maybe a more of a faster corner section or medium speed corner section. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But uh, there's a lot of a lot of similarities between all the corners, uh, and so I'd, I kind of like to diversify it a little bit. Now let's wrap it up with uh, from IndyCar commenter favorite bar on Broadway. Oof, man, I don't know. I, I, I we experienced a lot of them, but I got to go with Kid Rocks because that was the, they they were the the, the yeah. kindest to us. I also went to that Dirk Bentley place, the Whiskey Row or whatever. Okay, 
and uh, met a lady there who was uh, head of the marketing program. They're very nice people there as well. Had a salad there, had a nice little lunch and some some waters mm-hmm. on the on the Tuesday, I believe, or the Wednesday. I'm not sure. But yeah, great spot down there. I, I have so many great spots. Kid Rocks was a lot of fun. Uh, Honky Tonk is always oh, kind yeah. of an easy one right there on the corner. It's got three levels. You oh, know, yeah. you can overlook the entire. Rooftops are great. Yeah. Um, big rooftop I think guy. Florida, uh, who is it? No, Jason Aldean's is cool because it's got a big rooftop. I mean, these are all basic ass places. You know? yeah. But I, I mean, I really enjoyed Acme Feed and Seed because it's like Saturday. when it's I be- still want to go there. When it's beautiful weather and you have that view and I mean- you know the drinks are expensive as hell, of course, but uh, that ah. was you know that was really really you know a dope setup. So, I mean, you can't go wrong. You're gonna have a great time no matter where you are. Oh you know, yeah, <laughs> down there. But those are just kind of where I was most of the time. Love that. So, yeah. And now we roll right into uh, like I'm going to the simulator today. Okay. We're gonna go to the simulator in a couple hours. Now is this uh, the same? Is it a different course layout than the Indy GP? GP? Nope. Same, same one. thing. Yep. Okay. So. We've got a good car for this weekend, which is going to be great. Um, and, yeah, I mean, we're excited for this weekend. Rolling right back into it. So we got we got three races in a row, which is going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the Indy GP. We want to get not taken out by Simon Pagano this time and potentially have a you know have a race win like my teammate did last time. Um, and I think we also have to do our uh, random Indy 500 driver of the week really Hit quick. It. Hit we're it. just going to do it quick because we want to obviously stay on, on, on schedule here yeah. on time. Um, yep. Um, you're gonna have to give this one to Google, obviously. I'm not getting any All right, connection well, here. So you let's have to just use go your phone. with. Uh, we're gonna go with the 1982 Indy 500 field. Okay. And it's gonna be Tom Bigelow, the European Gigolo. Tom Bigelow. He. Uh, this was the year before my dad did his first uh, first Indy 500. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I saw this guy's name and I said, I respect this guy. Yeah. Tom Bigelow from uh, Whitewater, Wisconsin, Whitewater, Wisconsin. Uh, he's big dirt guy, big dirt guy. Oh, he raced forever. Oh How many gosh. 500? 17 seasons in wow. USAC and cart 104 combined career starts started in the Indianapolis 500 every year from 1974 to 82. He finished in the top 10, 39 times. So this guy was, was on Okay. It. Best finish was sixth in the Indy 500. Nice. So I respect that old Tom this Bigelow. Top ten finish for for Tom Tommy Bigelow, B. and he looks like a great man. Look at this Can guy, I see this big guy? great great guy. Uh, kind of going back to how we were talking about Ryan Johansson. Old school. That yeah. looks. You hear Tom, Tom Bigelow. Bigelow. That's old Tommy. What it looks like yep. Tommy old B. Tommy in the streets. So nice. Give Tom Bigelow. Let's go. Thomas Allen Bigelow, but Tom, old Tommy Bigelow. Tab. Eighty two is great year. We're finishing on tab, and uh, just like we went over tab in Nashville. So ha! that's the recap. We'll see you out there at the track uh, this weekend. Hey, we're back uh, to the racing capital of the world. Can't wait.